Hey everyone. So today we're going to be talking about passive aggressive behavior because this is one of those difficult or unhealthy or toxic behaviors that many of us have to deal with, but we don't always really know what's going on because passive aggressive behavior is often referred to as covert or sneaky aggression. So it's one of the ones that we really just need to become more aware of and really be able to see what's actually going on here because it can really mess with us. If we are in relationships where there's a lot of passive aggressive behavior, it can really start to mess with our minds. We're going to be talking about why people act out in passive aggressive ways and what we can do, how we can deal with it in healthy and productive ways. My name is Julia Christina and I'm a registered clinical therapist, a researcher, a coach, and an online course creator. I have a master's degree in counseling psychology and I work to help men and women get through the crap that is holding them back so they can like themselves and their lives more every day. And dealing with a close relationship or two where there's a lot of passive aggressive behavior can really hold us back, can really get in our way if we don't know what's going on and we don't know how to deal with it. So what actually is passive aggressive behavior? Well, it's otherwise known as, as I was saying a minute ago, COVID overt or sneaky aggression, where it is actually someone being aggressive, but they're doing it in a really passive way so that it's not always obvious to us and can kind of make us feel a little bit crazy because they're sort of appearing as if they're being nice or something's like innocent on the outside, but there's this like undertone of aggression that you can't always totally put your finger on, but it doesn't feel quite right. Another thing that can come up a lot in passive aggressive behavior is something called gaslighting. Now I'm going to link to a video. I'm going to make a video about what gaslighting really is and the details of that. But for all intents and purposes, gaslighting is basically when someone messes with your head by making you think that something's okay or something's a certain way, but you know that it's not, but they insist that it is. So they almost make you feel crazy. They're kind of messing with your senses. They're, they're saying one thing and then when you question them on it, they're com they completely deny it or they tell you that you're totally wrong or make you feel like you're delusional. And so there's a lot more to it than that. We'll talk about that, but just to give you a little taste of it. And passive aggressive behaviors, one of those behaviors where you can't always put your finger on what's really going on because the person is not being clear or honest or direct about what they mean, what they think and what they feel. You just know that something isn't right, but it's not always super obvious what it is. So why do people do this? Let's talk about a little bit where this comes from, not to excuse the behavior, but because oftentimes when we understand it, it can really inform and kind of change the way we handle it in more productive ways. So understanding doesn't excuse bad behavior because everyone has a reason why they act in unhealthy or unserving or unproductive ways. We all do have a reason. It doesn't excuse it or make it okay, but oftentimes it can help us really handle it in a more healthy or productive way. So usually people who are really passive aggressive, who just communicate this way all, if not most of the time, it's because when they were growing up, their wants or needs or preferences didn't matter. If they ever tried to be open and honest and clear with their feelings, with their thoughts, with what they needed, they were criticized, they were put down, they were rejected. And if this happened often enough, they started to develop the belief that what I say doesn't matter. And so I can't be open and honest and clear with what I need because it won't, it'll be ignored or it'll be rejected or it'll be criticized or be put down. So I have to figure out a different way to get my needs met. And oftentimes that can be through passive aggressive behavior. And then they just bring that with them into adulthood because they never learned that it was okay to be open and honest and clear with what they were really thinking, what they were really feeling, what they were really wanting, what they were really needing. And of course, because all of us have our wants and needs and all of us want to be able to express those wants, needs, thoughts, or feelings. If we learn that we can't do it in a healthy, direct clear way, we're going to figure out a different way to get our needs met. 
And oftentimes, again, that's through passive aggressive behavior. So it's often with people that feel really insecure with communicating their wants and needs, with people that really fear any kind of rejection for expressing their wants and needs. And, you know, just for people that just never really learned how to communicate in healthy, effective ways. So it's a tough one. It is complicated. It is complex. It's not because the person is trying to make your life more difficult or trying to be a jerk or trying to mess with your head. It's just because they don't know how else to communicate. So types of passive aggressive behavior, and it can look many different ways. Like passive aggressiveness can come out in many different ways. And one of them is through sarcasm. So if someone's using a lot of sarcasm um, in their communication, then that is a form of passive aggressive behavior. That's a form of passive aggression. The next one is if they're using a lot of indirect criticism. If they're kind of being a bit insulting and critical of you, but in, in not overt ways, or if they're trying to communicate something that they're not happy about, but they're not doing it in a clear way. So they might say something like, oh, wow, you sure like to be on that phone. Instead of saying, you know, can you put the phone away? Can you pay more attention to me? Or I'm feeling ignored. Like they're not actually able to ask for what they need. They kind of communicate in these sneaky ways. Or, you know, I guess they'll say something like, I guess I'll have to do that. I guess I'll have to take care of it. I guess I take care of everything around here. Instead of saying, can I get some help? Or does someone mind, you know, pitching in? I did it last time. So again, just not being clear in their communication. Um, you know, or they, they, when you ask them, like, is everything okay? They might say, you know, everything's totally fine. Like if they make kind of an underhanded criticism or an underhanded remark or, you know, say something that doesn't feel quite right. And you ask them if, if, what's going on, they'll say, no, 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 everything's fine, everything's okay, like, I don't know what you're talking about. Another form of passive aggressiveness is underhanded compliments. So I don't know if this has ever happened to you. Um, someone, you know, they'll kind of boost you up and then pull you down right away. So they'll say something like, oh, I'm so happy for your success. Man, you sure get lucky, don't you? Where they're like saying something nice, but then follow it with something that you're like, oh, that sucked. <laughs> that did not feel good. But you can't really put your finger on it because it's not overtly mean. It's that covert aggression. Or they can say something like, congratulations on the new job. How did you manage that? Where it's like, build you up and then put you down. And you're like, I don't know how to respond to that. I don't really know what to say. They can also make sort of just underhanded remarks, just sort of little cutting, little bit sort of poking remarks that are not super obvious and are not overtly like cruel, but they have this sort of undertone of insult to them. Another form of a passive aggressive behavior is either ignoring or giving the silent treatment or pretending not to understand. So just downright ignoring if you say something and they just pretend not to hear you or you know they just pretend not to understand that's passive aggressive or if they agree to something and then um and then say later on like oh i guess i didn't really understand what you were saying where you kind of know that they did but they didn't want to they didn't want to disagree with you or they didn't want to have an argument about it. They didn't want to have to deal with the issue. And so they just pretended like everything was fine. And then later on you come back and you're like, hey, I thought you said that this was okay. Or I thought you said that you would do that. Or I thought we agreed on this. And they're like, oh, I don't remember that. Or like, oh, I guess I didn't understand what you really meant as a way to avoid having any kind of of conflict because again people who use passive aggressive ways to communicate really fear any kind of conflict they were never taught how to deal with issues head on another thing that they could do is insult you and then laugh so say something kind of really nasty but then laugh about it so that you get confused because you're like that was nasty but you're laughing so was that meant to be hurtful but you know, if it felt hurtful, if it felt cutting, then chances are that's what was intended. 
Another thing, you know, and this can go along with all of these, is if they avoid something and pretend like everything's okay. So kind of not dealing with something, if you address it and say, you know, I noticed that you did that or you said that, and then they pretend like, oh, no, 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 like, I don't know what you're talking about, like, everything's fine, you know, I think you're just reading into things, like, it's no big deal, like, you know, there's no problem but then they go behind your back and gossip about you and talk about you and tell other people about how mean you are or about how selfish you are, about how inconsiderate you are, but never actually address it with you. Gossip is another form of passive aggressive behaviors about getting out um, feelings of hurt or anger or frustration in indirect ways, doing it about you behind your back instead of actually sitting down and talking to you about it. So how do we deal with this? How do we deal with passive aggressive behavior? Because it can be so frustrating and it can be so difficult and it is a really tough one to deal with because oftentimes people will deny it. Now, it doesn't mean that everyone who ever says anything passive aggressive is so entrenched in it that they can't ever own up to it. Because I think all of us have been passive aggressive, active passive aggressive, done passive aggressive things at some point. And there'll be different people who will be able to handle your response, your clear, direct, or or um, assertive response to them. People will be able to handle it in different ways depending on how intense their fear of conflict is depending on how entrenched they are in their feelings of not being able to really overtly own up to or address what they're really thinking, feeling, wanting, and needing. So kind of play with it and kind of just try some of these different strategies out. Um, so the first one is to really just call out the behavior that doesn't feel right to you. Call it out in a soft way. So trying to be kind of gentle, again, because for them, oftentimes any sign of like aggression or or any sign of, of any like them, they'll, they'll really quickly kind of just like pull back or deny or just recoil because it makes them so uncomfortable because they don't know how to deal with it. So calling it out in a soft way, saying something like, I get the feeling that something put you off or that you're upset about something or something made you angry or annoyed or upset let's talk about it or can we talk about it and they may or may not be willing to but at least you extending the olive branch and saying that you want to deal with it that trying to let them know that this is something that you do want to talk about you do want to work through the next one is to again give them a little bit of the benefit of the doubt get the, give them an opportunity to kind of save face a little bit and say I don't know if you meant that in that way but that felt kind of hurtful or that felt a bit insulting or that felt a bit mean but I you know I don't know if that was intentional but that's how it felt so again not being really forceful in the way that you communicate the next one is to just tell them how something made you feel to just be overt and say, when you said that, it didn't feel good or it kind of hurt my feelings or it kind of just made me feel bad or it just it just didn't feel good. And to know that they may not own up to it, they may not accept responsibility, they may again say, I don't know what you're talking about, you're just too sensitive, but to it's important for us to be able to communicate in healthy and productive and honest ways, even if they can't necessarily own up to it or take responsibility for it. It's important that we set those healthy boundaries, that we are assertive and clear in our communication and to hopefully maybe communicate to them through our healthy communication that it's okay to be more open and honest. So maybe teaching them a little bit about how to communicate in healthy ways, to say how something made you feel, to own what's going on, to be clear and respectful in how you address things. And then maybe hopefully they'll catch on to that. Which leads us to the next way to deal with it, and this is really important, that we don't get sucked into their drama. So if they're being unproductive or unhealthy in the ways they communicate, that we don't get sucked into it and start acting really passive aggressive ourselves. That we don't, you know, fight fire with fire. That we don't, you know, compromise our own integrity in the way that we communicate just because they are. That we hold our integrity, that we hold our ground. And 
address things and not let someone walk all over us or, or emotionally manipulate us or take advantage of us, but also not being aggressive or unproductive in the way we communicate too. So being able to just say it, like that didn't feel good, I didn't like that. And another thing that can be really helpful is just saying to them, what are you trying to say? What are you thinking? What are you needing? What are you wanting? What are you trying to say? And inviting them to be more clear with their communication, to know that they may not be able to, again, to expect and accept denial or avoidance, but at least you are being clear with your communication and you're trying to open the doors for better, better communication and eventually they will catch on and they will start being more open and honest and clear in their communication as they learn from you and as they learn to see that what they're doing isn't gonna fly, it isn't okay, and that you need and want better and more from them in the communication. It's coming from a good place. You want the relationship to be better. You want the relationship to be more open open and honest and healthy. And if, as much as you communicate that, they will start to catch on. Hold your ground. Don't get sucked in. Be clear and respectful and in your communication, have your boundaries. That is essential. Speaking of boundaries, I have a download for you, 25 ways to say no. Some of them you'll be able to use in some of these situations with people who are being passive aggressive, and some of them you'll just be able to use in all kinds of life situations. Learning how to say no and just having healthy boundaries for ourselves. I'll put the link in the description, make sure you grab that. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it out, let's stay connected, and come and join my Facebook group, goodformegroup.com, and I will see you again soon. Take good care.